guys. So I'm gonna challenge myself. Check it out. It is 10.37 right now. We'll call it 10.40. I'm gonna give myself less than an hour, under an hour to complete this tree. Master's challenge. Let's go. What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another lovely day of tree work. So we're here on a little commercial property. Going to be taking care of a little bit of pruning. Um, I'll show you guys. Here's our first one. It's a pin oak. Just knocking out dead. No live tissue cuts. And over here is the real challenge. The whole reason I'm really filming to be honest. It's a widespread white oak. So we're going to be uh, chasing some dead there. Some hazard dead. Mainly over here a little bit, but there's some way up there that I'll probably grab. And then just a couple on the tips there. But yeah, let's go uh, get to it. So we find ourselves with an interesting little conundrum here. Uh, and that would be, as some of you or most of you may know, there is a certain season for oak trees to be pruned. Um, Typically that's in the fall months when it's cold. There's a beetle that is a vector. It'll carry a pathogen that, which we call oak wilt. And if you cut into oak trees within a certain, within that time that that beetle is active, it can actually uh, carry that and kill your oak tree. So with that being said, we're being careful today just to cut dead stuff. We're not gonna cut into any live tissue, but the interesting thing we find ourselves dealing with is something like this where that limb right there is essentially dying back and this is a pretty old oak so my best guess is it's in the process of some sort of retrenchment where it's kind of downsizing just because it can't provide enough food to all the parts um but it's you can maybe see there's still live growth on that limb even though it looks dead so that's something I'm really hesitant to even cut on because they've invested a lot of money in this oak to, you know, keep it alive and make sure that it's still there nice and healthy. Uh, I'm probably going to end up leaving that, but it kind of leaves us in a spot where that limb looks like it's dead. They're going to think we didn't do a proper job. But if we were to cut into the live tissue, which I'm assuming it's still alive, if there's still green growth there, then potentially we could... Uh, we could put that tree in harm's way as it isn't currently the season to cut live stuff so yeah stuff you got to deal with as an arborist <laughs> So you guys might be wondering why we wouldn't wait till the season to trim oaks to do these oaks, right? And uh, to answer that question, in case you were wondering, pretty much we had already come out here. We had removed the dead wood. Now, the issue, if you don't know with oaks, is the dead wood tends to hold on really well. And when they when these trees lose their leaves, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to identify what's dead and what isn't. A lot of the times they're in kind of that transitioning state where, you know, they haven't quite decayed all the way to break them off easily. So they look like they're alive even though they aren't. They're not producing any leaves and they're essentially going to die out. So in order to do a proper job, that's why we're here right now when this tree is full of leaves. That way we can identify which of those... Uh, limbs that are dying out and 
no longer produce leaves, therefore no longer produce their own food. And uh, yeah, just to do a proper job, that's why we're here now. Now, if those trees are not producing leaves, that means that the tree is not supplying it with any water, therefore we can cut it to a stub at the branch collar there. And what that's gonna do is compartmentalize over. And because that tissue is no longer alive, the oak will, will not spread into the main tree, therefore preventing the tree from dying out. But yeah, in case any of you were wondering why we're here and why we wouldn't wait, that is the reason. Now it goes without saying there will always be signs of decay and I have a good example here. If you take a look at this branch, you can see how the bark is discolored. So take a look at that. Sometimes these fungal growths here can be a good indicator. You see that? And look at the, the branch overall. No leaves on it, even though you have buds. You know, this one's real crispy. But for example, you know, a lot of trees, you can break the branches off completely, but oak tends to hold pretty well. So for example, if I were to try to break this by pulling on it, it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, once it's further decayed, like for example, this one, you can see how exfoliated that bark is. It's practically peeling off and that one's a good one that you can really see how, you know, it's far gone. Whereas this one, you know, is like in the intermediate stage where it's not quite dead yet, even though it's no longer being supplied food or water. That's why it's drying out. But this one over here, if you take a look, I can break off easy. And that's the difference between a limb that's recently dead and a limb that's been dead for a while. This has been dead for a while. But trying to identify these in the winter time can be a little bit difficult because it kind of blends in with the rest of the bark. Uh, and pull test is a good one, but with oaks it can be difficult because, you know, pull test and that, that's not gonna break, even though that's dead. That no longer is being provided food or water. You see the tips break off. No leaves means it's completely dead. So I want you guys to check this out. Trees, actually, the process of deadwooding is natural in trees, and trees will actually shed limbs that are dead by themselves over time. Now we come in uh, to take deadwood out because it can present a hazard to the public. Uh, so the thing I want to show you guys is like this, this is ready to pop, right? But if you take a look down here, like the tree would naturally shed that. And so it's already compartmentalizing, you know, closing off where that dead was so that nothing can enter. And it's gonna seal that, that hole where the branch used to be. So trees naturally shed and compartmentalize by themselves without human intervention. It just takes a lot longer. And, like we talked about, presents a hazard, which is where we come in to remove that hazard.
All right, so had to consult our in-house BCMA to get a second opinion on this oak. Uh, so as far as like limbs like this, where there's still live growth, what we're gonna go ahead and do is just take out the tips where it's completely dead. That way we're certain that, you know, no live tissue is gonna be cut. Uh, it's gonna knock out two birds with one stone. Aesthetically, it will give it a better appearance even though it's not a proper cut but at least the client will be happy and we'll be able to avoid cutting into life tissue until a further date when we come back to, to prune it again. But that'll give the limb time to either die out or bounce back and compartmentalize that cut that we're about to make. So I'll be climbing out to the tips and take care of that and uh, checking out for any more. I think I see some pretty big ones on the back side over there those ones I'll probably have to cut completely but we'll see once we're up there and really this tree is like this is like a master's challenge I might time myself on this one and see if I can do it you know maybe like 30 40 minutes obviously I have to make cuts and stuff but when you look at it this looks like a competition tree you know I'm gonna have to hit it all over there I'm gonna have to go all the way at the top out to the tips over there and then down here finally so yeah this is a pretty interesting little challenge let's see if we can do it all right guys so i'm gonna challenge myself check it out it is 10 37 right now we'll call it 10 40. i'm gonna give myself less than an hour under an hour to complete this tree master's challenge let's go also for reference, I've never made it to masters in the comps, but this is good practice. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna wing it and pretend like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're gonna be taking a look at this swamp white oak. First of all, I'm noticing that we have some deadwood up there. Uh, looking down here at the base, uh, not really seeing anything too concerning. You know, it's an old oak tree, but I don't see large wounds or anything that would concern me as far as like the integrity of the actual tree there's a little bit of decay down here at the base uh still it looks like a pretty solid tree it's been there for a while um looking at what i need to do i see some deadwood out here that i'm probably gonna have to go get deadwood along the back taking a look up there there's some pretty decent sized stuff back there uh we got some over here a couple little th things here and there we're just doing hazard deadwood so i don't have to worry too much about it we got these little tips out here so i'll probably have to walk out to this but with that being said the tree overall looks healthy to climb and i'll go ahead and start setting up a tie-in No. We hit some dead, already off to a bad start. And if I ever make it to Masters, this is what's gonna be my run killer. <laughs> no slingshots, no slingshots. I've seen some real bad badasses sling it by arm, so it's inspired me. Shout out to Samuel from Alamon Arbor, that dude's a beast. There we go, oh yeah. But I'm a beast too, so you better watch out. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We're gonna 
get some weight on that to manipulate it. I don't want to waste too much time. Yeah, play it smart on the oaks because the oaks got that thick bark and those suckers that'll wrap around on your throw line get you stuck. It's not a good time. But I got something real nice up there if I can just manipulate it correctly so I can get my rope in there. Second throw too, like come on guys, give me some props. That's freaking badass. Not bad for myself. Typically I'm really bad at the throw line. I think I'll have to do a canopy anchor. That's my plan. Just with how high I'm tied in. You know, oak's pretty strong, but I wanna make sure that it holds me. And where I'm trying to tie off, I want it to choke off directly onto the, the stem there. So I have no fear that it might uh, break on me or anything like that as that is a pretty high tie in there. So we'll see if this goes good. Uh, yep, yeah, looks like I isolated it on the front. Now I gotta get the butt end right. Probably doesn't need weight, but I'll weight it anyways, just to make sure that it goes smoothly. So this is my biggest mistake, I guess, for most events. It's just trying to rush, getting in my own head. Really what I need to do is just take a chill pill and uh, relax. And that's what I'm gonna do. Just relax, go with the flow. It's a normal work day. Normal work day, you're trying to get shit done in an efficient manner. No panicking, no panicking. Let's get her done, get her done. Uh, I already forgot that I probably should have said staying clear when I threw the throw line. Um, so that's lovely. But, you know, when we're in the event flow, we'll, we'll say it. While we work, I tend to forget. <laughs> Just not good, but oh well. Alrighty, cool. At least the hard part's done. The rest is just all fun. And you know what? Let's not even risk it. rather play it safe than be sorry. Especially because I'm probably wrapped up in a bunch of little suckers and brushy leaves up there. I have to kind of pass it through all that. So I'm hoping this works. Yeah, just gonna send up a canopy anchor. Um, that'll kind of help me get that high tie in that I'm looking for. Ropes gliding wonderfully through all that, which is really good news. That was 
way better than expected. No slingshot required. Yeah, we're gonna be a beast with the throw line someday. I promise you that. It's my worst event, but I promise that I'm gonna get better. No need to rush, right? So, oh, there we go. We we're cutting something a little small there. And uh, we'll test this system out, anyways, before going up. So, I'm just gonna set up a Texas tug configuration here that way if I utilize any redirects it'll allow me to pull it out and retrieve it at the end of the climb Texas tug is for uh, mechanical advantage because that pulley at the bottom allows me to pull it out a lot easier so I'm probably gonna run out of rope which means I'll have to tie both ends together to be able to retrieve uh, yeah it also help me manage it a little bit better well maybe not I think I reached the top. We hit something. What are we hitting? Oh, no, we're stepping a little sucky. Still got a couple feet to go. Oh, we're stuck on something. What the heck? There we go. Bypass it all. And surprisingly, we still have a tail end. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see, but I actually looped around up there. It looks like we're caught on some suckers, but it'll either break or hold until I get up there to clear it out the way. Preemptively. Cool, cool. Let's get going. Obviously running SRT here, rope runner. I got an akimbo just in case I uh, need to use it for work positioning. Or I got a drag tail. It's always useful for that.
go. out real quick. Make sure it holds our weight. There we go. Looks like it held. And all right guys check it out. It took me around 13 minutes to set up. So we're calling it 1053 as we're ascending. So that means I still have uh, right around, we're gonna say an hour. I probably got around 40-ish minutes to complete this tree. So <laughs> let's get to it, guys. <laughs> Alrighty. So for the sake of the video, I probably won't record everything just because uh, my battery's halfway dead already. And we know how notorious these GoPros are for shutting off. So what I'll do is um, I'll record snippets and bits and pieces here and there. And then I'll show you guys the final time afterwards. But I would record the whole thing. But like we talked about, GoPro batteries are just so trash. Yeah, that's a beefy dead one. Definitely dead, dead. See that up there, dead. So, thank goodness I got that high time. Man, I am out of shape. Whew. That was quite the climb. And again, this one, we have live growth even though the thing is dead. It's crazy. See, that was what I was talking about. That's the nice thing about canopy anchors. It'll choke and then, anyways, let's get through it, guys. We're running out of time. I'm not gonna, I'm not about to explain something I've already explained before. <laughs> Stand clear. Clear. Awesome. So we got the top dead. That was the hardest one.
best way to approach this is. Again, being calm, cool, collected, not rushing the climb. Maybe that's a normal climb. There's no need to rush. I'm pretty sure they probably wouldn't like this rope angle. Uh, I'm almost positive of that. Again, I've never done a master's run, so I wouldn't know 100% sure. But I would probably have to jump over the, the Union, take the time to do that. Uh, but, you know, trying to do this a little bit quick and it's a little. <laughs> Again, walking it back with this rope angle, probably a big no-no for competition climbing. So, I'll utilize this tying point. If I was actually doing the run, I probably would have hopped the, the, the rope through there. It would have been a better angle that way. Uh, with that being said, you know what? I'll do it anyways, because we're here to practice, right? So, practice doing it the right way. There we go. Cool. That's what I should have done in the first place. Um, I'm going to hit this little guy just because we're here. So, staying clear. Got one more over there. And we're good to go. Just gonna bring some tail here for me. Just to lock it out over there. And before we leave this spot though, I will go ahead and take care of this. So we're here as well. You see another one over there. All right, I'll be back. I'm gonna hit the small ones and then I'll show you some other stuff just for the sake of the battery. Out here on a limb walk, I have a bad knack for spotting dead wood. And I noticed this little piece out here on a limb. And the only reason I'm chasing again for aesthetic purposes um, technically I wouldn't consider it hazard deadwood but it is substantially sized enough to where it'll catch the attention of whoever's underneath and that's not too good for us so for the sake of aesthetics staying clear <laughs> Shout out Gyro Lanyard for work positioning. Further complicating my uh, situation because I was planning on cutting that thing whole, but it's still got live growth there. So we'll just cut the tips. Yeah. 
stand clear. too much as really nobody would really be walking underneath and it's not really hazard deadwood small enough to not worry about and yeah I'll bring you guys back in a bit or you guys can watch me do my little hop and a skip here let's see where do we need to go so that stuff's really not hazard uh, I think I gotta head down there. So let's start heading down there. Probably the smartest play here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, not very smooth. But with the added weight, my rope runner slipping a little, which is not ideal. So let's check it out. Uh, da, 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 da. I think we have some over there. Looks like we have a few there. Um, maybe one over there, and then I'll hit that last. So I'll hit this area first. Looks like. Probably going out to that tip, hit all that, come down. Uh, I don't think anything over there. Uh, that looks like it's still alive. There's like one over there. You know, I can come down over there. Let's do that. Execute the plan. There we go. Okay, so get one last piece down here. And we'll be good to go. There it is. Cool. See that too, that swivel allows me to orient the MRS system because it was crisscrossed initially. Now I'm facing the right way. So I'm just gonna be clipping the tip there. This is where it would be nice to have a double lanyard to triangulate myself here, but don't have it. So there goes that. And really, that's uh, that's all she rode. As far as that's concerned. The reason I love oak trees, they're very strong. Way out on the tip on that on an MRS system, and I can still put almost my full weight on it. So yeah, cool. Um, I think uh, I'm good to go. I'm just gonna lower right here. A 
Hopefully that knot doesn't get caught. And it did. Oh no, that just ruined my plans. Ah, uh, yeah, no. That was the only problem having a big bulky knot. Change of plans. Woo. Good thing I love improvising. Tell us nothing. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I'll walk it back. Walk it back. Walk it back. Deadwood enough, and then you start spotting it all over the place. And you just can't fight the urge to like go and get it, you know? So, for the sake of my sanity, I'm gonna go chase. Cause I think I still have a little bit of time left. You know what? Let's get some height. <sighs> Those guys that don't like swinging, I'm gonna tell you why you should get comfortable with it. And it's for this reason. Because if you have the height advantage and the rope angle, you can position yourself in such a way. Instead of having to do that long wind walk, we just swing right to where we want to be. We go rock climbing right on it. Grab the nubs, try to grip as best as you can. Steering clear, boom, touch the bell, cut the bell, oh, need to get a little closer. This is where you'd love to one hand a saw, right? Nope, can't do it. I took a vow. There we go. All righty. Here's the beauty of the lane here too. Walk it back, boom. Uh oh, we're binding up. Sheesh. My shirt's riding up on me. Okay. Situate the lanyard before the landing, staying clear. Coming down. Do do do. Do the whole spiel. There we go. There's the climb, and without pulling any gear out, let's see what time we're at. All right, so we just got down. No edits, no cuts. Let's see what time it is. Guys, woo! 
Right on the money, let's go. <laughs> I mean, it was it, it wasn't perfect. I could have planned it better, but you know, we did it an hour. All right, let's recap. So, if I had to do it again, I think the lesson I learned was again, even though I told myself not to rush, I did rush. I kind of got too hyper focused on trying to get that high tine with the canopy anchor when I think a basal anchor would have been beneficial just for rope management and also being able to pre direct. So, really, if I was to do this tree again, knowing what I know now, I think that I still would have wanted to go up there, maybe even if I wasn't as high and I would have pre-directed out here, you know, done this side first, hop over there, do that side as a secondary pre-direct over there, and then I would have finished up there, hit the entire side with all those little bits and pieces I did there, and then come down, straight down, that way, walking it back. I think that probably would have been the most efficient way, because what I realized, even though I had the high tine, I had to do a lot of limb walks, uh, it took me a lot of time, a lot of effort, and the time spent pre-directing where I could have just ascended vertically up probably would have saved me a lot of energy, a lot of time. So, you know, got it here in the head. Next time we got white trees, probably set up a pre-direct if I can, and it'll probably save me more time than, you know, the little couple of feet that I gained from that canopy anchor. <laughs>